Thanks, Thanks mate. Uh, thank you, everybody. Um, okay, today's just uh, Premier League Productions with us for the broadcast section. So You're lucky man. So we will <laughs> <laughs> we will just have Belvers and then we'll stop the cameras and move on to the red sections. Okay. And Boney, hello. Hi. Um, can you start with some injury news? Do we have Marcos back? Yes. Yes, we have. Uh, I think good good injury news. No, we obviously we continue without the the three players who had surgeries during the the summer, but I expect. Everyone else available. We still have two days, so you can not always guarantee because there are uh, still trainings. But uh, right now, everyone else is is available for the game. Yes. I won't go through all the, the, the long term, but Enesuna is he progressing? I think they are not close to to playing. Neither of the three that had the surgeries, uh, they are doing well. Uh, they are doing all all their process. But uh, neither of them are really close or uh, really training with the group or even partially or they are still by, by their own and going through the process. How about Evan Olsen? Can we expect him to make his debut the weekend? Yeah, he has trained uh, well this week, uh, normal with the team. I think uh, he will be for sure involved in the, in the game. And uh, we all expect no, that he starts well. He he gets everything. It's, it's difficult when when someone arrives, especially with the language. We don't want him to give him all the info because probably it's too much. But uh, at least the the most important things for his uh, specific position, so so he can he can uh, survive there outside, no, in the pitch. If he if he has the the chance to play, yes. How impressed have you been with what you've seen of him so far in training and, and how he has settled with the group? I think he's a, obviously a, a lovely profile. No, I think he's a, a poor number nine. Uh, he's uh, comfortable uh, finishing, but also he can help us in the link-up play. No, I think technically he's he's sharp. He, he will... Uh, Help the overall offensive game of the of the team, not only the the finishing side. And uh, I hope he 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 takes quickly, you know, everything that we are gonna try to to tell him. He starts combining with the with the teammates because I suppose it's 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 not always easy, you know, when you change countries, different languages. Uh, but I hope this process goes as, as smooth as possible. And is there any update on Daniel Jefferson? Is he staying? Is he no, he continues with us. He's training well. Uh, it's uh, an option we have also for Sunday. So uh, at least uh, this week nothing is going to happen and, and he will be involved uh, with us in the game. Um, looking back to Forrest, obviously you spoke after the game. Having watched it again, having analysed yeah. it, was there much new stuff you learned from that performance? I think overall we were probably, uh, even if we tied it at the end, we were closer to winning the game than losing the game. I think we had the most clear chances, but I wasn't fully, uh, you know, uh, pleased with the performance, especially first half. No, I think we started quite well, but after the Danilo's injuries. We lost the ride, everything went too slow and, and probably we didn't uh, finish well the first half. We conceded the goal and we didn't finish strong. I think we were better in the second half. We managed at least to get one point. It's not the result probably we wanted, but also we have to value because I think it's a difficult place to, to play that, yes. It seems to be a bit of a trend because I think is it 66% of goals for Bournemouth under you have come in the second half? Yep. So do you keep getting everything wrong in the first half? I don't know, probably both of the things. <laughs> I think uh, I would prefer not to start the strong score first. Uh, normally, this stat, I think we score a lot of goals at the end, but we also concede a lot of goals at the end. We try to play in a high rhythm. This makes the games quite open and probably both teams finish quite tired at the games we play. So there are chances for both teams at the end. And 
I think a lot of things happen at the end. That's why I give a lot of importance also to the subs. You know, sometimes when everyone is fresh, is focused, it's difficult to make the difference. But when probably a, a fresh player comes in the second half and, and, and can uh, face players that are already, you know, damaged or tired or not at 100%, maybe you can make more the difference. Uh, there are good things and bad things about it. We will try to start stronger, but uh, it's not always always possible. I I also have a, another stat that is not very good for us in that side because we think we've lost a lot of points when we were winning, but also we have recovered a lot of points when we were losing. It means that uh, it's not so important the first goal because more things are going to happen, but we have to learn, especially if what type of team we are and try to take more more advantages than the opposition. Fair enough. The next opposition is, is Newcastle. Um, they obviously played most of their game against Southampton with 10 men yeah. and only had 20% possession yeah. or something. So how helpful is it to analyse a game like that yeah. when they're not going to play like that? No, no, it's uh, it's not uh, a lot of help for us the first game they played because it's, uh, Southampton play with a different system, uh, different style. It's very conditioned the game uh, with the with the red card. Uh, I think it's is very good from their side. They 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 win a game where they play with ten men from the first half. They are tie nil nil and they managed to find a way to win this this game i think they are very good players and even and they are experienced players and uh, f uh, when you see bruno you see joel Inton, you see isaac you see gordon you know even if they are playing with one less they are always going to be a threat and obviously I don't expect them to lose one in the first half, so it's going to be even more, much more difficult for us. Because of that red card, yeah. it looks like Lloyd Kelly might start. Would you give him a hug when you see him in the tunnel or a cheeky kick on the ankle? No, no, no. I, the same things I said about Dom Solanke past week, I could say about Lloyd Kelly. No, I think he has been very good for us. Uh, the days before I arrived and also past season, I think he was phenomenal. Every chance he had to play, he played in a very, very high level and I wish him all the best. Obviously, I don't want him to play well <laughs> in, on Sunday, but uh, he's, uh, he's a very good defender and it's going to be it's gonna be tough uh, for whoever he has in front, for sure. And how special an occasion is it for the club this game with the, the anniversary? I think it's, it's, it's probably very, very fitting no? that also Eddie comes with uh, Newcastle. It's a big part of the of the history of the club. I think it's, I think it's 125 years. There are a lot of years, you know. There is a lot of history behind, and it's, 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 it's not uh, probably here in England. You don't see it as special, but for me, that I come from outside, uh, for me, 125 years is a, is is a lot, and I'm I feel lucky, you know, to be part now in in this special moment also. You played in Rabobank. Yeah. Hundreds. Yes. Tempted to register yourself so you can play <laughs> <laughs> No, it's <laughs> especially for us. It's not. It's not a good good news. But uh, it's true that for me it was special to play in the in the in the century game or whatever it's it's called uh, for for Rayo and also special to be here part not playing. Fortunately for us, uh, in in uh, such a special moment. Yes. Thanks, Anthony. Thank you. <laughs>